This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com. Okay, uh, good evening everyone. Bruch Mabayim. Before we begin, I just want to mention something about a very important organization that benefits really the entire Jewish world. An organization that really spreads Torah to the four corners of the earth. They have uh, hundreds of thousands of shiurim that you can listen to from over 300 lecturers, speakers, rabbanim, and that is TorahAnytime.com. They need funding to be able to continue their work. Many people benefit from their shiurim. Many people have no other access to Torah other than turning on the internet and logging on to TorahAnytime.com. Our shul has benefited from them. It's an opportunity really to hear shiurim from many chashev rabbanim, many lecturers, and uh, they need our help because in order to maintain this organization, they need manpower and obviously they need funding. So they asked me just to start off the shear by giving them a plug. And if uh, we encourage everyone, if you log on to taranytime.com, you can make a donation. They have a raffle for $100,000. And who knows, maybe it'll be your lucky day. <laughs> okay. And on that note, we'll all begin. Okay, so we have a very interesting episode in this week's parsha. We're after Yitzhak Avinu survived last week. You know, it was a rough week last week. He had the bris milah, he had the akeda. Now it's time to get married, right? So Avram Avinu sends Eliezer, his faithful shliach, and he says, if you look at number one, he says, Hashem lekeh shamayim, God, the God of the heavens. He who, he who took me from my father's house, from the land of my birthplace, he spoke to me, it's a little uh, discombobulated over there, he swore to me, God says, Avraham says to Eliezer, don't worry, Hashem will send His angel with you. And you will take a wife for my son from there. And the first question we have to ask ourselves is, what happened to the Malach? Where did he go? Hashem tells, uh, Avram tells Eliezer, don't worry, God's going to send the Malach. Where is the Malach? Look through the whole parasha. No Malachim. Last week it was full of Malachim. Three Malachim come to visit Avraham. The Malachim go rescue Lot from Sodom. And he has the Malachim. The Malachim tells Avraham, No, don't do it. Don't shech Yitzchak. Last week, what happened to the Malach? Well, he was working overtime last week. You know, he didn't show up this week. Avraham tells Eliezer, I'm going to send a, Hashem's going to send a Malach. And the Malach doesn't show. Where'd he go? Okay. Now let's look. If you have a Chumash, let's turn to the Parsha, Parsha Shchai Yisara. And... We'll notice that everything is in fast, uh, fast forward. Everything is in fast motion. What happens over here? Eliezer is on his way. He goes to Aram Naharayim, and he offers a tefillah. If you look in Pasuk Yud Beis, page one ten, Vayoyimar, right? And he says the following: Hashem Adoni Avraham, Hayoyim. Please grant me today vaasei chesed and do kindness em Adoni Avraham with my master Abraham, right? Eliezer, Eliezer offers a prayer, and he says, Hashem, please grant me success today. Fine. Look in Pasuk Tezvav, Vayihihu Terem Kila Ladaber, as he was, he wasn't even finished speaking. He couldn't even get the words out of his mouth. Vihinei Rivka Yoitzes, Rivka comes. Wow, that, you know, instant gratification. He prays, He's not even finished praying. So imagine, you know, Hashem, please give me a million. Well, you know, you get bumped on the head with a million dollars. You, can, you can't even get the words out of your mouth. And Hashem already answered him. Rivka appears. He didn't even finish davening. Look in Pasuk Yudzayim. Vayara to'eva l'krasa. He runs to her. Relax, you know. Like they said in America, chill out. What's he running? And then he says, please give me a drink. Look in Pasuk Chav. Vatemaher, she hurries. Vatarat, she runs. And he, he asked her, who are you? He said, I'm Bas Basuel. So what does he do? He takes the jewelry. He slabs it on her. Eliezer, relax. You know, this is a little bit too quick. 
a little too fast. He davens, Hashem, please send me, send a wife for Yitzchak. He's not even finished davening. Rivka appears. He darts to her. She darts to get the water. She's running back and forth. He throws the, the jewelry on her. Somebody relax, you know, relax, you know. Take a deep breath. Take it slow, you know. They tell you, you're not supposed to jump into... Take it slow. What's the rush? Why is it, first of all, why is Hashem answering the tefillah so quickly? And why is everybody running? Says the brisker of Rabbi Yitzhak Zeb if you look at number two, he says, let's look carefully at the tefillah of Eliezer. What does Eliezer say? Hakreina lefanai hayoim. God, I want to seal the deal today. So the tefillah is, he wants to make it happen today. The only problem is, what do you mean today? The day's almost over. You know when, when Eliezer gets to Ram Narayim? Liyes Erev. It's almost evening. It's a half hour before Shkia. <laughs> it's, so he, imagine that. He comes to the town. It's a half hour before Shkia. He says, Hashem, make it happen today. God says, okay, you want it to happen today. Enough with your language, my Nasri already. Stop the davening. Here's Rivka. Eliezer has no choice. He looks at the watch. 28 minutes to go. He runs to her. And then she's running. And he says to himself, why is she running? She doesn't know about my deal with God. It must be that God is inspiring her to run because He's showing me a sign that this is the right one. And that's why when Eliezer relays all this information to Basuel and Lavan, Eliezer makes a big deal about the fact that he ran and she ran. Why is he telling Lavan and Basuel that everybody's running? He's saying, listen up. Right? Herzachayim Lavan. Don't interfere with the Shidduch. Basuel, don't interfere. Because God obviously wants this to happen. You know why? Because I davened. That I want it to happen today. And look how fast it happened. I couldn't even get the words out of my mouth. Rivka appears. I run to her. She runs to me. And we're able to seal the deal today. So if you have any qualms, if you have any doubts, whether you know, this should happen or not, there's no telltale sign greater than this. I davened it should happen today. It was almost night. And in those few moments... Bim, 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 everything happened. Okay. Now look very carefully. We're introduced to a man by the name of Lavan. If you look in Pasuk, Pasuk Lamed. Okay, look on page 114. Pasuk Chavtas. Ula Rivka Ach, Rivka had a brother, Ushmai Lavan, his name was Lavan. Vayoretz Lavan el Ha'ish. Lavan also runs to him, right? Lavan's also in on this. He's also running. He runs. But look what the Pasuk says. Vayihi kiroisa sanezem. But when he sees the nose ring, there's Hatzmidim in the bracelets, Aidea Choso, and his sister. And when he hears Rivka saying that this man is proposing to me that I should marry Yitzchak back at home. So what does the Pasuk say? Look at the Pasuk. Vayavo yel ha'ish. So Lavan walks to the man, v'hinei oimen al-agmalim al and he was standing by the candles. So let's look carefully at these Pasukim. What happens over here? Lavan sees him. He runs to Eliezer. Then what happens? Lavan sees the jewelry on Rivka, and he hears Rivka's story. So then, for some reason, Lavan slows down. He's not running anymore. It says, he comes to the man. Why all of a sudden is Lavan taking it so slow? In the beginning, it says, as soon as he sees him, he runs. Oh, Eliezer! Right? He makes a mad dash. Eliezer probably, what? Well, who's this guy? And then he sees the jewelry. And then all of a sudden, you know, he comes down. What happened? So Rav Meir Simcha of Dvinsk. Rav Meir Simcha of Dvinsk is the Meshachach. He wrote a very famous commentary on Chomish. He lived in the, in the 20th century, in the early 20th century. By the way, Dvinsk was a very small town in, uh, in Poland. Poland. Where? Latvia. Okay. And there were two great gadolim there. The Ragachavar, we spoke oh, about him, Shah Shudas, and, and Rav Meir Simcha of Dvinsk. So Rav Meir Simcha says something very interesting. Lavan, of course, if you look through the parsha, is Lavan married? doesn't say he's married. Lavan is Aram Naharayim's most eligible bachelor. And he sees Eliezer. He knows who Eliezer is. Eliezer is the Eved of Avram. And 
Lavan, of course, is a cousin to Abraham. And Lavan got the uh, telegram that, you know, Abraham had recently had a daughter, you know? And not so long ago, he had a daughter. You know what her name was? Bakol, right? If you look at the beginning of this episode, it says, Abraham zakein babayamim. Abraham was old. Vashem beirachas Abraham bakol. Abraham was blessed with everything. But the Medr says he had a daughter by the name of Bakol. So Lavan says to himself, Wow, I'm a single guy. And my cousin just had a, a daughter. And my cousin's very wealthy. And Eliezer, I see him coming with camels and money. They're after me. They, they know who to come for. So Lavan runs, you know. That's a good shidduch opportunity. But then he sees the jewelry on his sister Rivka. And he realizes they're not after me. They're interested in her. Okay. Vayava, he calms down, he relaxes. I have nothing to gain from this. He's not in such a rush anymore. Okay. Now look what Lavan says to Eliezer. Okay. Now if you remember by Shal Shudas this week, we spoke out a very interesting piece of information that we're able to glean from Targum Unklas. Remember? That the Rambam learns out the Halacha, that when you, when you destroy an Ir Hanidachas, you first have to give them the opportunity to do tshuva, and he, he saw that from the Targum. Okay? We're going to see a very interesting thing in the Targum. Look in Pasuk Lamed Aleph. Vayoymer, Lavan tells Eliezer, Boy Baruch Hashem. Welcome, come, you blessed one of God. Lama Samud Bachutz, why are you standing outside? I cleared out the house. What did he clear out the house from? Right? Well, you know, don't worry if you have allergies. You know, I just called the uh, toxic mold specialist and I cleared out all the... What did he clear out the house from? So what does Rashi say? I cleared out the house from idol, idols. You know, don't worry. You're going to be, you know, you're going to wake up in the middle of the night. You're going to bump into like a statue of the Buddha. Don't worry. I cleared out all my avodazar. Could someone please tell me? Why would Lavan think that Eliezer would have a problem sleeping in a house that there's Abu Zara? Well, Lavan's not making him serve the idols. There's no Isser of staying in a house that has an idol in it. It's not a church. So why is Lavan mentioning to Eliezer, Don't worry, come, come, I cleared out all the idols. Maybe there's Malach with the idols the all the time. That's why they're running all the time. They see the Malach there, they're running the Malach. And then, maybe the house also. Okay. Maybe. <laughs> they with him all the time. You know, they, 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 were, they wanted a... He was afraid the Malach wouldn't come in. Yeah. Okay, that's interesting. Look carefully at what Eliezer asks Rivka. Let's turn... Let's turn back to page 112. And in, on page 112, Pasuk Chav Gemma. Eliezer asks Rivka two questions. Basmiat. He says to her, Who are you? Who's your father? Right? Hagidin Ali, please tell me, does your father have a place for us to sleep? Now, you know, don't try this today. Imagine, you know, an adult comes over to a little girl, Oh, who's your father? You have a place for me to stay over? Right? You call the police, you have him arrested. But you know, this is a different different time period, different generation. So look carefully. Three years old. Okay. Look, they, you know, look. Right, he asked two questions. He says, "Who are you?" And Hayesh Beisavich Makayim Lanu Lalin. Does your father have a place for us to sleep? He doesn't just say, "Do you have a place to sleep?" He says, "Lanu." You have a place for us. The Targum Unkula says in Pasuk Chaf Gimel, you know what he was asking. Ha'is beisavich asar kasher lana limvas. Or number five, does your father have a kosher place for us to sleep? In other words, not just does he have an extra room in the house. Does he have a kosher room? In other words, he wasn't asking about the food. Tell me about the environment. What's the environment like? Am I going to be comfortable there? Does he have a kosher place for us to sleep? Lanu. Him and he brought along about ten men with him. Ten men on the ten camels. Now, how does Rivka respond, Vataymer Elav, she says to him, Gam Teven, Gam Mispai Ravi Man, we have food, Gam Makaim Lalun, we have a place to sleep. She doesn't say we have a place for you to sleep. Right? He asks, Do you have a place for us? So she should, she should say, We have a place for you. 
He doesn't, she, he, she doesn't say that. She says we have a place. In other words, we have a kosher place. It might not be kosher for you, but we have a kosher place. She runs to Lavan and she says, Lavan, look, listen up. If you want this guy to stay here, you got to clear house. You got to, you know, take all those, you know, Buddhas and all those, you know, Gechkas and all the idols out. So that's why Lavan, Lavan already had the heads up. He knew from Rivka that one of the questions that Eliezer asked, as we see in the Targum, was, our thing is the coast clear? So Lavan, she never said the coast is clear, right? Look per- carefully in the Targum and Chafhei. She said, Af asar kosha limbus. We have a kosher place to sleep. But she doesn't add the word for you. He asked, do you have a kosher place for us? She said, yeah, it's kosher. Not for you, maybe. She goes and she tells Lavan. Lavan clears out. Okay. Now here, we're going to get into the uh, subconscious motives of Eliezer. Okay, let's turn all the way to Pasuk Lamites. Now Rashi tells us something very interesting. Rashi tells us that this whole episode in the Chumash is stated and repeated. What does that mean, it's stated and repeated? As the story is happening, the Torah tells us all the details. Eliezer comes to Aram Narai and he davens. As he's davening, Rivka appears. And then Rivka says, come, I'll give you to drink, I'll give the camels to drink. And then he meets Laban, and Laban says, come inside. Fine, so now they sit, um, Eliezer down, Eliezer sitting in front of Laban and Basuel. And now Eliezer starts again from the beginning. Hello, I'm the servant of Abraham, and I came here and I prayed that I should find the sheikh for Yitzchak. And as I'm praying, I see Rivka, and I ask Rivka for a drink, and she says, I'll give you a drink, I'll give, my camels to, I'll give your camels to drink, and I meet Lavan. So not only is the story stated, it's repeated. Now this is not the normal custom of the Torah to just keep on relaying the same details over and over again. And now she says, the reason why the Torah repeats this information is because the Avos were so beloved to God that not only does the Torah say what happened, the Torah repeats the whole thing, Nachamal, repeats it a second time. And Rashi says, even though there are many halachos in the Torah, that in order to derive the halacha, we learn it out from an extra letter. So the Torah certainly is not verbose. The Torah is very concise. It's, uh, it, it keeps things very brief. Nevertheless, God loves the Avo so much that this entire story is repeated. Okay. So when Eliezer is repeating the story to Laban and Bas, well, look at Pasuk Lamates. Vayoy Mer Excuse me. Vayoy Mer Look on page 116. Eliezer is talking to Lavan and Basul and he says, Vayoy Mer I said to my master, Ulai lo selecha isha acharoi. Maybe this girl is not going to want to follow me. In other words, Eliezer says to Avraham, Eliezer is repeating over what happened. Eliezer says to Avraham, Avraham, you're sending me to Aram Naharayim to find the Shilch for Yitzchak. Maybe this girl is not interested, is not going to be interested. I'm going to offer her the money. And she's going to say, huh? I don't know who you are. Are you called to a three-year-old girl, three-year-old yeah. Isha? I In mean, a way. It's complicated here. You know? <laughs> she was Katana, but... But... She was already Ruya Labia at that age. That's why he waited until three. You know, why did he wait till three? He should have... Uh, that, okay, so Eliezer tells Abraham, maybe this woman is not going to want, be interested in coming. Look at Rashi. If you look at number seven, right? Again, Eliezer is expressing his concern to Abraham. Maybe the girl is not going to be interested in coming with me. Says Rashi, the word Ulai is spelled without a vav. A likes him. Instead of saying, maybe the woman's not going to be interested, it says, to me, a lie, to me, a lie, to me. What does this teach you? Bas haysaloi la Eliezer. Eliezer had a daughter. Vahaya mechazer limso ila, and Eliezer was looking for an excuse. Sheyomer lo Avraham, that Avraham should say, lifno seila ab lahasio bito. Eliezer was trying to come up with all kinds of ways of not having to go to Aram Narayim and not having to take a girl from there because he had his own daughter who he had an interest and Avram said, you know what Eliezer, forget Aram Narayim, forget my family you're my trustworthy Eved, we'll be Michutanim I'll marry off my son to your daughter that's what Eliezer was after it doesn't say Ulai with the Vav, it says Eli to me in other words, Eliezer was interested in himself 
Amr Lai Avram, Avram said, Fat chance. Bini Baruch, my son is blessed. Viata Ara, you Eliezer, you're accursed. Vein Ara, Medavik Vibarach. It's not a shidduch. We can't mix. I'm blessed. You're cursed. Why was Eliezer cursed? He was from Canaan. Ara, Canaan. And therefore, this is not a shidduch. This is, not, this is a no go. You know? How do we know you are from Canaan? He's an Eved. Yeah. Right. Damesek Eliezer. Okay. So the Vilna Gon wants to know. Where in the word Aleph Lamed Yud do we see that Eliezer had an interest in marrying off his own daughter to, to Yitzchak? But because it says Ulai without a Vav, I mean, how do we see the fact that it's missing a Vav? Oh, because it's missing a Vav, it must be he had a daughter and he wanted to marry off his daughter to Yitzchak. I mean, we have to answer why it's missing a vav, but where do we see in the missing vav that he must have had a daughter and he wanted to marry off his daughter to, to Yitzchak? Says the Vilna Gon. Who? The daughter. No, that was uh, maybe Abraham's daughter. Which, Eliezer's daughter? No. No, not Eliezer. Oh, uh, okay. Right. So the Vilna Gon says like this What does the word Ulai mean? <coughs> Anybody know? Ulai, what does Ulai mean? Maybe. Maybe. Perhaps. How do you say, per- are there any other ways of saying perhaps in Hebrew? Maybe. Hishamru lachem. Pen. Pen. Less. Less. Maybe. Pen yifta. Or, pen yiyadavarim levavcha belial. Maybe there will be something in your heart improper. Or, pen yiyabachem isha isha. So, Ulai means maybe. Pen also means maybe. What's the difference between the word ulai and pen? Positive and negative. Or? Positive and negative. Ulai means maybe, but hopefully yes. Like Sarah says, Abraham, marry Hagar. Ulai ibanem imena. Maybe I will be built up through her. In other words, maybe you'll have a child through her and it will be considered as if I also have a child. Meaning, maybe, but hopefully. Ulai. Ulai, p- please, you know, I wish it would happen. What about the word pen? Pen is hopefully not. Maybe pen, right? Pen yiftel davchem, hopefully not. So why does Eliezer say, he, t- he turns to Avram and he says, Avram, Ulai lo sove ho isha acharai. Maybe this woman won't want to come after me. Why does he use maybe, maybe yes? In other words, hopefully she won't want to come after me. He should have said, Pen, pen lo sova yishachrai. Hopefully, maybe, but hopefully not. Ah, oh, why is he so hopeful that this girl is not going to follow him? So, because he uses that word, we detect why was he hopeful that this girl not follow him? He must have had a hidden motivation. What was the motivation? He had his own daughter, and he wanted to marry Yitzchak off to his own daughter. And the choice of the word ulai tells you to focus on the fact it's missing a vav. Eli, he had an invested interest. He had his own daughter that he wanted to marry Yitzchak off to. There are those who ask on this, Vilna Gon, that we do find an instance where it says, Ulai, as hopefully not. When Avraham, when Yaakov Avinu is plotting to steal the birthright from Esau, so Rivka gives Yaakov right, the begadim hachamudos, the clothing of Esau, the hunting clothing. This way, when uh, Yitzchak would feel him, he would feel like, like uh, Esau. And Yaakov says, "Oh no, Ula Yimusheni Yavi. Maybe my father will feel me. And I'll be like an imposter in his eyes." In other words, Yaakov's, Yaakov's afraid if he sneaks in to steal the brachos, maybe his father is going to touch him. And uh, the father is going to discover that this is not Esau, that this is Yaakov. And there, what word does Yaakov use? Ulai. Ulu. What do you mean, Ulai? What he was hoping his father would touch him? He should have said, Pen Yemusheni Avi, lest my father touch me. I hope it doesn't happen. So there are those who say, No. Ulai over there means hopefully yes. Yaakov was such a tzaddik. He was such an ish emes. He was such an honest person. That even though he knew he would have to steal the brachos, he was hoping his father would catch him stealing it. Why? He didn't want to have to trick his father. He'd rather do it straight up. He'd rather his father catch him. Hopefully my father will catch him and I don't have to be so devious and sneak behind his back. 
Okay. Now here's the question. You ready, Rabbi Isai? We're getting into the deep subconscious now. Okay? Remember we pointed out, we pointed out that the story of Eliezer finding a wife for Yitzchak is repeated twice. First as it happened, and then Eliezer relates it back to love and Embasul. So could somebody please tell me, why are we only picking up on this subconscious motive of Eliezer the second time the story is repeated? In Pasuk Lamates, V'oimar el Adoni, Eliezer is telling Lavan and Basuel, Ulai lo acharai. Maybe this woman won't want to follow me. If he had a subconscious motive, then we should have picked up on it as the story was unfolding. As Abraham is talking to Eliezer, so Eliezer will be saying, take a look, all the way in the beginning of the parsha, Pasuk Ches, page 110. Excuse me, Pasake. If he had an ulterior motive, we should have detected it as it was happening. When, when Eliezer tells Avram, Avram, I don't know if I should go on this mission. Maybe this woman won't want to come to me. So you'll say, no. There we can't pick up on the subconscious motive because of there, Ulai is spelled with above. Yeah, but you could ask. So why would the Torah bring out the subconscious motive only when the, Torah is re- the story is repeating itself and not as it's happening? So we have two answers to this question. One answer is from Reb Chaim Brisker. Okay, you've got to put on your thinking hats. None, no cloudy thinking tonight. Right, when I was in ninth grade, I had a great Rebbe, Harab David Harris, Shlita, who's now the Rashi of Chavetz Chaim, and he would say, you've got to remove the cobwebs. You know what the cobwebs are? We're used to thinking very cloudy, you know? Uh, like, in order to learn, you got to be precise. you got to really get the brain churning, oil it, remove all the cloudy uh, precision. Okay, you ready? Here's a listen to what Chaim Brisker says. Eliezer and Avraham are having a heart-to-heart talk. Avraham says, Eliezer, you're my faithful servant. Do me a favor. Get me a wife for Yitzchak. So Eliezer says... Where am I supposed to go? Aram not Ryan. I'm going to go there. The girl's going to think I'm crazy. I'm going to ask her, come with me, here's money. She's going to call the police. I'm going to be arrested. Maybe this woman's not going to want to follow me. Is there anything wrong with Eliezer expressing to Abraham his concerns about, about this mission potentially failing? No. It's a reasonable thing for him to ask the one who sent him. So we do not detect anything in that question about any ulterior motives. But says of Chaim Brisker, what's happening now? Eliezer is relaying to Lavan and Besuel and trying to convince them to allow their daughter to marry Yitzchak. So imagine here, right? Who, who wants to be Lavan and Besuel? Anybody want to? Lavan and Besuel. You know, you guys should really let uh, your daughter marry Yitzchak because Hashem is really behind this thing. I just, I dive into God. And right then, Rivka appears on the spot, and she's running, and it happened today, and this is from God. And let me tell you about what happened. You see, I was talking to my master, Avraham, and I told Avraham, maybe this woman's not going to want to come after me. Is he crazy? Why is Eliezer telling that to Lavan and Besuel? What, he wants to destroy the whole shidduch? Why would he give them any inkling that he had doubts about the shidduch happening? He's just going to cause them to entertain the possibility that maybe Yitzchak is not a good catch. So the fact, not that Eliezer asked Avraham, maybe the woman is not going to want to come after me. Why is Eliezer telling anything about this to Laban and Besuel? It must be deep down he had a subconscious motivation that he was trying to stop the Shidduch. And even though he himself did not recognize it, he himself obviously was sent on the mission to make the shidduch happen. Nevertheless, why is he offering unnecessary... Imagine the shadchan come, calls me up. He says, I have a great girl, amazing girl, and um, you should call her right now. And you know, you know, you go out twice and you get engaged. The only thing is, I'm not sure if you're going to want to go out with her because, well, with the shadchan crazy, she, she tried to sell it. She's trying to sell the girl, and then she throws in information that's going to destroy Why would Eliezer mention... To Lavan and Besuah, that he had doubts of any girl coming back with him. 
it must be that's where we derive the fact that he must have had a subconscious motivation to stop the whole thing. Okay. Another answer to the question. There's a, a one of the Bali Toysas wrote a commentary on Chumash called the Moshav Zakanim. And if we look in number nine, the Moshav Zakanim says like this. Moshav Zakanim says that Eliezer at first had no Havamina. He had no thoughts of marrying off his daughter to uh, Yitzchak. You know why? Because he knew he's Arur, he's from Canaan. Yitzchak's, you know, blessed. It's not a Shidduch. But then he comes to Aram Narayim and Lavan gives him a bracha. He says, What does Lavan tell him? Let's take a look. Look on page. 114, he says, Vayoymer, love and says, Bay Baruch Hashem! You are blessed. By the way, we learned from there that after that, Eliezer was no longer Ur. Because the Torah and Lavan gives him this bracha of Baruch. So Eliezer says, Hey, now I'm Baruch. Forget Rivka. My own daughter will be good. In other words, it's now that he came to Ram Narayim and he got this bracha. And he exited, he extricated himself from being Ur. And he became Baruch. So now, now it's a good Shidduch. Okay. Let's turn to another very interesting episode. Pasuk Membez. Okay, Pasuk Membez. And you got to keep those thinking caps on. Pasuk Membez. And Eliezer tells Lavan and Basuel, Va'avai hayoim, I came today. Okay. Says Rashi, Va'avai hayoim, Hayoim Yatsasi, today I left. Bahayoim Basi, and today I came. One second. How is it possible to get from Israel to Aram Naharayim in one day? What? He took a. Ah, what happened? It's impossible. It should take a few days. Mikan Shekav Salai Haaretz. He had Kvitsas Haaretz. You know, God made him fly. He, he got there really quick, right? He got there, you know, Kvitsas Hadarach. You know, sometimes. Sometimes you have to drive from one place to another. You go, oh, it only took me a half hour. How, you know, how did it happen? He had kvitsa sadach. Sometimes it takes 10 hours. Sometimes it takes a... He had kvitsa sadach. It was a miracle. Right? It was a miracle. Now Rashi says another thing. Amar Rabbi Acha. Rabbi Acha said, Yafa si chasan shal avde avais. More wonderful are the conversations of the servants of our forefathers. Even greater me Torah son shall banim than the Torah of their descendants. Shahare Parsha shall Eliezer kfula ba Torah. This episode of Eliezer, like we mentioned, is stated and repeated. Feharbe gufe Torah, and there are many halachos. Like Nasnu Ella it was only given with a, a little hint. In other words, right? How do you know you put tefillin on your left arm? Because it says yodcha with an extra hey. So think about it. The Torah, right, putting on tefillin is a mitzvah dairaisa. If you put the tefillin on your right arm, nothing. You should have left it in the bag. Okay? You don't get any credit. If you're righty. If you're righty. Yeah, you should have left it. You're better off leaving it in the bag. Right? It's important halacha to know. You're supposed to put the tefillin on the, right, on the left hand. Where do we learn it from? Hey. That's all the Torah could give. Nothing more the Torah say. I'm not... That's all we could afford. One letter. You want to know that? We can only afford one letter. And yet, this whole Gansa Maisa was Shaduchim. <coughs> 20 Psukim, and then Nachama, we repeat the whole thing another 20 Psukim. So Rashi says, look how wonderful, look how beloved the Avos are to Hashem. That even their Avadim's conversation is so beloved that the Torah goes all out. Okay, look carefully at this Rashi. Rashi says two things that have absolutely nothing to do with each other. It's like I come and I say, by the way, it's raining. And the Republican National Convention will be on this and this date, right? These two things have nothing to do with each other. Rashi tells me two things. Number one, that Eliezer, what? He had Kvitsa Saderach. He left today, and he got there today, on the same day. He left Eretz Yisrael, and he got to Ram Narayim on the same day. Okay, very nice. And then Rashi says, Oh, look how much Hashem loves the Avos, that this whole story has repeated itself. What are the two things got to do with each other? Why is Rashi uh, slabbing them together? Another question I'll ask you. Could someone tell me how Rashi knows it took Eliezer one day to get there? 
Because he says, I got there today. Imagine somebody, he walks from here to Alaska. When he gets to Alaska, he tells them, I want you to know I got here today. Oh, really? That's very interesting. Uh, we thought you got here in a week, a week from now. Obviously, whenever you get somewhere, you got there that day. You can't get there tomorrow. So where does Rashi see in the words, I came today, oh, that he left today also. It doesn't say anything about when he left. I have another question. Yeah. The camels, how often do they drink water? <laughs> because they don't drink water every... I think they could drink a lot of water and then they could go for miles, right? Go a couple water, of weeks, yeah. If they drank the water before they left, and then he gives them water the same day. Why do they need to drink again? Yeah. What do, you mean, what are they filling up for? Good question. I don't know the answer. Maybe it was part of the test. In other words, it's one thing you come with, you know, when camels haven't drunk for months, they're all shriveled up, right? They're the shvacha camels, right? They're, uh, one second, chalusha stick, whatever. It's a Yiddish. My wife doesn't like that word. Chalusha, they're... So if, she, if he comes with, with, with dried out camels and the girl gives her the drink, okay, she has rachmanus on the camels. But if, she comes with, if he comes with camels that look like they have drunk enough, and even then, this girl helps out his camels. That's already a balas chesed. Even part of nature, they, 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 I don't know. Okay, we'll think about it. Okay, but here are the two, two questions. Number one, how does Rashi know, Rabbi Isai, that Eliezer left on that day, just as he came that day? And number two, what does the second thing got to do with it? Okay, there's a very interesting sefer that it's nearly impossible to get, Shavive Eish. Luckily, in Yeshiva Chavetz Chaim, they have an old, old, old copy I was able to find. In number 12, this is from Rav Moshe Glasner. Moshe Glasner was the fourth generation from the Chassam Seifer. He wrote a parish on Chulin called Dar Ravi. Listen, he says something amazing. Look on page 110. Okay, Eliezer is talking to Avraham. And he's telling Avraham, maybe the lady's not going to want to go after me. And Avraham says, don't worry, don't worry, I'll send the Malach and this and that, you'll be successful. Look in Pasuk Yod. Vayakam, he got up. Vayelech, and he went, El Aram Naharayim, to Aram Naharayim, El Nachar, to the city of Nachar. Right? So what does the Pasuk say? He left. He left Israel. Vayavrich HaGamalim, all of a sudden the camels are kneeling down. Okay, there's one thing the Torah forgot to tell me. That he actually got there. It tells me he left Eretz Yisrael. And it doesn't say he got to Aram Naharayim. All of a sudden, it says, what does the Torah say? He left Aram Na- uh, Israel, right? He left Israel. Bam, the camels are, are kneeling down by the well. Excuse me, you forgot a detail, Hashem. You forgot to tell me he arrived. Now, let's look at the second time the incident is repeated. When Eliezer is telling over the story. If you look about when El- Eliezer is telling over the story, look in Pasuk Mem Aleph. He's talking to Avraham. Avraham says, don't worry, the girl's going to want to follow you, and if she doesn't, you are, you are relinquished from any responsibilities, right? You're absolved from your oath. Pasuk mem alef, ayisi nakime yalasi, you're absolved from your oath. Next, Pasuk, va'ova yayoyim, and I came to Aram Narayim. One second, Hashem. You forgot to tell me he left Israel. What do you mean he came to Aram Narayim? How did he get there if he didn't leave? So on the first episode, it tells me he left. It doesn't tell me he ever got there. For, right? The first time it says he left Israel. And it doesn't say anything about him arriving. The second time, it says what? He arrived doesn't say he left. It must be. The coming, the leaving, and the arriving, it's the same thing. The Torah didn't leave anything out. The leaving, Eretz Yisrael, and the arriving, and Aram Naraim, it's the same exact thing. You know why the Torah leaves out the arriving in the first time, and the leaving the second time? Because the arriving and the leaving are the exact same thing. When he left, he arrived. So you'll ask me, come on. Oh, so you ready for this? Ready for this? Try not to smile too much. Try not to be too happy when you hear this. But no. you'll say, what kind of proof is that? Maybe the Torah is just being concise. Maybe the Torah, you know, the Torah very often is very concise and for the sake of brevity, doesn't mention details. So maybe on the way here, on the first time, the Torah just left out for the sake of brevity. It left out that he came. And for the sake of brevity, 
And the second time around, it left out that he left. He says, Rashi, don't tell me that. Because the Torah repeats the entire Misa with every detail. It says it, and then it repeats it again. So there's no possibility when it comes to this story that the Torah is being brief. Because look, the Torah repeats the whole story in great detail. So you tell me now, why does the Torah leave out two details? The coming and the first time, and the going the second time. Because the coming and the going are the same thing. That's how Rashi knows. Not because he says, I came today. But Rashi says it because the fact that Torah just says the coming, it doesn't say the leaving. And the first time it says the leaving, it doesn't say the coming. Okay? So Rabbi said, where do we start? How did we start the Shir? Who remembers? We just actually just learned that the coming and arriving the same day. Like why they mention here, arriving here in the... Oh, to tell me the arriving and the coming, are the, it, it is the same thing. Because it happened at the same time. No? Yeah? Right, right. When you come, you arrive. That's In other words, if, if he had Kvitsa Saderach, then the moment he left Aram Naraim, he came to... The moment he left Israel, he came. In other words, the Torah leaves out one place to come and one place to going to indicate that the coming and the going were the exact same event, really. Because as soon as he left, he got there. Okay? Yeah, especially when the Kitsata Zaderach is involved. I mean, you're talking about uh, probably matters of maybe in minutes, so who knows? I mean, you know? Because it is a miracle. Kitsata Zaderach, it's a miracle. Especially, you have to realize, he davened in the morning, right? He was talking to Avram from the time he spoke to Avraham until the time they, they, right. they granted the Shidduch, it's one day. The whole thing happened in one day. One day. One day. Okay? You know what, you know, I was thinking, you know what it comes to show? It comes to show, man, Yitzchak, he's ready, he's waiting for Shidduch so many years. Yeshua Hashem Karafayin, all it took was one day. <laughs> right, so, so what's the rush? I mean, she, she's three years old. When the right, to, right, when it comes to Shidduchim. I mean, you could take his time, like you take him. What? He could take the camels and just go there and take a couple of days. She's only three years old. What is the rush of, to capture her as a Shidduch? Yes. Okay. You, you know what I mean? I mean, three years old, who's going to put eye on her unless there's a com uh, command from God? Obviously, it's a command from God. I mean, go. I mean, why, why, why did Eliezer want it to happen today? I don't know. That we don't know why exactly. No, he Shema Yikad Menu Acher, right? Maybe. Uh... That's corrupted also. She was in Lovin's house. She was in Lovin's Okay, good, right? That's also true. Okay, Rabbi, so I want to say, how did we start off this year? We wanted to know. Abraham says, I'm going to send you a Malach. Where's the Malach? Okay, you ready to find the Malach? What happened? Look in Pasuk Nun Hey. Vayoymer Achia Vima, her brother and her mother said, let this girl stay with us a year or ten months. Says Rashi. What do you mean her mother and her brother? Where's Basuel? Says Rashi. They were trying to stop the Shidduch, so Hashem sent the Malach and poisoned Basuel. We found the Malach. That's the Malach. Says the Briskarav, actually the son of the Mishom David Salvechik, he says, you want to know where the Malach is? Hashem, Abraham tells Eliezer, if you have any problems, I'll send along the Malach. As soon as there are problems, as soon as they try to interfere, they want to poison Eliezer, the Malach comes and switches the poison. By the way, from where do Chazal derive that they try to poison Eliezer? If you take a look in number 16. Look in number 16. Vayusam lefanav. They placed in front of him. Le'achal to eat. Balaturim points out that the word Vayusam, it's spelled Vav, Yud, Vav, Sin, sa, sin Mem. Right? That's how it's read. That's the Kri. But it's spelled Vav, Yud, Yud, Sin, Mem. Vayihi, Sam. What's Sam? Poison. That's how we know. Vayihi, Sam. Which, oh. which one is Ikar? The Kri or the Ksib? They're both. You can, both? You can make judgment on it. Yeah. Now, another thing. The Baatun points out that there are two places in Tanakh where it says the word Vayisam. One over here, and one when Yosef HaTzadik passed away, it says Vayisam Ba'aron B'Mitzrayim. They put him in the coffin. It says Baatun, so Chazal Si. There they wanted to put him in the coffin, and here they wanted to put Eliezer in the coffin. What do you mean But Eliezer is alive? How do you want to put him in the coffin? They tried to poison him. Another proof that they try to poison Eliezer. 
here, right? Imagine, uh, yeah, Shuki, I'm going to my house. And I, uh, right, come in, come in. And uh, I'm here, and you know, my whole family. And we say, come for the Shabbos meal. And we take out the chum and we put it in front of you. And none of us are eating. It's a little suspicious, right? <laughs> right? Imagine uh, you invite company, and you don't eat, nobody's eating except for the guests. Vayusam lifanov. They put it in front of him. What? What's everyone else eating? No one else is eating anything. Right. Everyone else is saying, enjoy, so enjoy. Right? Rabbi, right? Rabbi, but how do you say it? was only Lavana tension or it was uh, Betuel and Lavana tension? <laughs> it's different Midrashim. Otherwise... Rashi seems to say Besuel. Right? If you look at Rashi, he seems to say Besuel. Yeah, because Mara also says Betuel. The Medr says Lavan, that's one of the explanations. Lavan bikesh la'akaras hakol. Oh, yeah. Okay? I'm going to tell you one more, one more proof that Eliezer was trying to be poisoned. And then we'll hold it here. Okay? The proof goes like this. There's a story in the introduction to the Bir Hagran on Shulchan Arach that the, the girl was once in Erl Chayid's house and he was a guest. And the guy brings him food. And, you know, he wasn't watching while he was eating. And the girl, and he says, eat, eat. So the girl puts it in his mouth. He starts eating and he throws up. The guy comes back. He sees uh, the plate still full. He says, please eat, eat. Well, the girl eats. Throws up again, the guy didn't see. And the coast keeps on telling him, eat, eat, eat. And the girl keeps on, you know, eating. And one of his Talmudim said, what do you keep on eating for? Obviously you're sick, you can't eat now, so don't eat. The Vilna Gon said like this. There's a Gemara Sacham, if you look at number 21, that says, Kol ma sheyom lecha bala bayis aseh. Whatever your host tells you you got to do, chutz mitzay, unless he tells you to leave. Okay? That means, why? Because when you go to someone's house, they're the boss. You become his Eved. You're subservient to them. You've got to listen to whatever they say. They say, say Dvar Torah. Say Dvar Torah. They say, sing a song. You've got to sing a song. They say, stand on your head. You stand on your head. Okay? And the Gra says, whenever the Gemara t- says, Asay, you must do it no matter what. And you're obligated to follow the Gemara. Unless it's going to kill you. That's what the girl said. So this person said, I have to eat, even though I was very sick. I wasn't going to die from the food. So he kept on telling me to eat. I was obligated to eat. By the way, we don't pass like this. Mishnah Baruch says, you don't have, if he tells you to eat, you don't have to eat. But that's what the girl held. The girl's shita was, no, no matter what, as long as it's not going to kill you, you've got to do it. In fact, Tosfis holds like the girl. Because Tosfis asks, when they offer Eliezer the food, what does Eliezer say? I'm not eating until I speak my piece. Let me tell you what I'm here for. So Tosfis asks, how was Eliezer allowed to refuse his balabas? The balabas says, eat. Eliezer should be obligated to eat. That's not make sense. Not, not, but I contradicted the Midrash. Okay. One second. Oh, you know what the answer is. One second. The Grah says, Tosa says, that if the balabas tells you to eat, you're obligated to eat unless it's going to kill you. From here, Chazal see, it must be, it was going to kill him. And that's why he wasn't going to eat. The balabas told him? Or? That's how Chazal know. That it was poison, because he said, I ain't eating. Why? But he's, he's violating the Gemara Mpsachim. The answer is, says the Gra'ad Shatitzei Nafshay. Obviously, it was going to be Tetzei Nafshay. How do you know? How do you know? Look at the time, Yonasem Ben He saw it was poison. All right, Shkoyach, have a good night. You've just experienced another Torah class, brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.